Okay, so I'm gonna do some legitimate sound tests here with the RCF 515 and 808 subs. Uh, I've got them both set up right here and I am in a legit wedding venue. I play here all the time. Shout out to the Little Log House. I love this place. Reached out to them, they said I could come by, hang out. I've got the 515 and the 808 and I'm attached them to my DJ table. And the reason why I brought that is so I can work with my mixer. To be honest, it took me about six, seven minutes to get them both set up and wired. One thing I'm gonna be changing with what I got currently is I'm powering the 515 just with the regular power cable, but I've got an adapter coming today that should, I should be able to connect these two together and the sub will power the top. I wanna hear how the mic sounds, but I'm gonna ring out the room, which is one of the nice things that the touch mix does is ringing out the room means that you can take all the feedback out of your microphone with high volumes. It kind of, it, it locks into the signals that are, feed, that are causing feedback and it eliminates them. All right, so I've got the mixer, uh, I've got channel three set a little bit above, I'd say about four, four over zero. One, one two. two, check, 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 one, two. That's the microphone and I'm just gonna push it from here. Check, check one, two, two, two. two. It's at a nine right now. Nine over one, two. Check, checking the microphone. All right, so we're gonna head over to the head table and see how things sound from over here. So as you can see, we got a head table right here. It's about the middle of the room. Over there is where I'm normally set up when I play here, right? So we're all the way over here. Good evening, everybody. Hi, my name is Brandon. I'm Brandon. And I'm gonna talk to you tonight about love. Even though I've never really had a girlfriend. Brandon's in the house. Now, I am holding the microphone close to my mouth like you're supposed to. And this is a super cardioid mic, which means the signal is going straight up. Not cardioid, which kind of goes around it, right? Like a podcast mic. This one's direct, so you, you, I can't talk over here. See, I can't hear it very well. It's all right here, it's all here. So the advantage of that is that as I can hold it a little bit lower and still pick up the voices. Um, it's obviously not as great as it would be here, and this is ideal, obviously, but sometimes you get people talking here, sometimes you get people talking here, and if they're doing that, you're just screwed. I have a legitimate question for you DJs. Please put it in the comments that like to go over 110 dBs. Why? Fucking hell. That shit is loud. It's uncomfortable. I'm pushing these to try to get in the red light. And I got the subs red blinking. You know, not, not consistently like red, but blinking at about 115. Um, they started to blink when I was pushing this song. And I walked out onto the dance floor to see, and I couldn't stay out there. It's like fucking crazy. Maybe I'm getting old. This old man rant. I got him to about 115, and I know that the specs say 128, but I, I feel like honestly, like when I've talked to the speaker companies about these numbers of how high it hits, it's always like an ideal situation, like a soundproof room. Who knows what kind of music they're playing with that? Also, I, I bet you if I, you know, Josh Groban, probably you can go to 150. Aaron Neville. If you're from the 90s, you get that. <laughs> I'm playing a song right now that always clips when I'm at a wedding, Starships. I'd always look over at my subs, whether it was the Sub 2 and the Bose or the RCF J8, always red. Not like solid red, but always just, you know, bumping red. So I set this up, same volume, same everything, and I'm gonna play it and let's see if we can get it to go red. It doesn't even blink. Let's see how loud that was. So we're getting up to 110 and it's not clipping. So I'm very impressed. Now I was when I saw these for the first time 
at DJX and I've been keeping my eye on them and now that they became available, I had to snag them up because they're just really hard to get, especially the 808s. I think I got the last two, I'm sorry. Overall, my impression here, a couple things that it hit. One, while I was testing songs that normally at least bump red or hit red on my other subs, the Sub 2 and the RCFJ8, 808s never even got close to, to hitting red. I did hit red when I got to like 115, 118, but it just blinked. It wasn't a solid red. I didn't get any louder than that because it's too fucking loud. <laughs> There's just no point. I mean, I guess I could push him, but I, I didn't want to put myself through that. The disadvantage I think that the column array has is in the tops because there's no low end. And I, I think like I, I've, I just felt like I wanted to have like a legitimate top and sub combo that didn't weigh 200 pounds. And then this thing comes out, which is about the weight of a column array system. It looks like one too, you know? So I love the fact that I don't have to have a speaker pull, that the top just kind of screws right into the sub. I love the look of column arrays, which is why I've been so into them so long. It's way smaller. The sub is way smaller than my J8. The top is about 21, 22 pounds. So that picture they showed on RCF for like the guy holding it, I don't know who that was, Arnold Schwarzenegger, there's no way you could hold that with one hand. Lifting that up on top, that's gonna be a thing. You might hear me bitch about that later on. But the sub is about 44 pounds, weighs about the same. I feel like a little bit lighter than my sub two, but it's just so compact. And the sound I'm getting out of it is just unreal. I'm happy with how the microphone sounds in it as well. Nice and crisp and clear all the way through. I took out all the feedback so I can really push that thing if I need to, but the secret, again, in a room like this, if you're going to DJ a wedding specifically, and if you're kind of on this side and you've got this much space to cover, you just, you gotta have another speaker. Man, it sounds so good. <laughs> it sounds so good. Look how easy that is, that setup. I like that tray on top. Boy, that's nice. And it's nice and clear and crisp. Vocals coming through. You gotta try it. I'm telling you, you gotta try it. It's gonna cost some money to get the right gear, but if you do that, you can honestly take care of a room like this. Your old people was always asking, do, do your main speakers, can they handle a big room or 300 guests? It's not just about the speakers, it's how you use them. It's how you use them. I think that's the secret. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you like what I said, hit the like button. Those are my initial thoughts. I haven't taken it out to a wedding. I do have one coming up in a couple weeks and I will gig log that and show you what I think. But this is just first sound test, first look, first thoughts in a real legitimate wedding venue. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Bye.